Please stand for our opening hymn, hymn 423, hymn 423.
our service for Holy Eucharist on this 12th day after Pentecost can be found in the rest of your bulletin. And for those with us online, you can follow in the links for the description. So we'll continue our service now for Holy Eucharist. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Now we call it for purity. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And now we'll sing together the glory. They did not say, 
Where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness, in a land of deserts and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives? I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priests did not say, Where is the Lord? Those who handled the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more, I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coast of Cyprus and look. Send to Peter and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though there they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me and the fountain of living water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read Psalm 81 responsibly. Sing with joy to God our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and said, O open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. And yet my people did not hear my voice, and Israel would not obey me. So I gave them a word to suffer us in their hearts, to follow their own devices. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I should soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. But with Israel would I be with the finest feet, and satisfy him with the money of the rock. A reading from the Epistle to the Hebrews. Let mutual love continue, and <coughs> not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison, as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured, as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of the leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding day, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. The host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, 
Go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. You will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, o Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I'd like you all to take a moment and think of a person or persons who have affected your life by giving you an example of what it meant to be. Now, whether you imagined one person or multiple people, I'm sure if we had time to sit and compare, there would be certain themes that you would see in each other's examples. Maybe even you are sitting next to one of those examples in your life. Now, my hope is that for many of you, one of these examples may have been your parents, because that would mean that you lived in a wonderful and stable home. Now, in my case, my parents are one of those examples. Both of them were Sunday school teachers as I was growing up, and both have continued to be involved in the church very much even to this day. Now, it could be that you remembered as an example a leader in the church, whether someone lay or ordained. And while I can think of personally many in the church who have been examples for me, there are a few who stand out, some who you've heard me speak about before. Bishop Henry Parsley, who confirmed me and Paul Walker, who was a chaplain to me. Although Heidi Kinner is the one of those examples who you've heard me speak of a great deal and who I continue to be in contact with, who I continue to have there as an example and mentor to me throughout my ministry, even to this day. Heidi, throughout my time working with her, throughout her helping me through the discernment process, throughout my time working with her in Montana, continued to be that example of who I wanted to be as far as a preacher. She was the example that I always wanted to live up to in my preaching. She's still the person that I learned the most from from her sermon.
maybe you had an example of someone from your life beyond these church doors. For me, that person was Sam Jones growing up. Sam is a non-denominational pastor who I fenced with. And as a world-class fencer, not only did he teach me how to be a better fencer, but he taught me how to do so while being the best Christian possible as a sportsman. Maybe the examples that you had came from formative years in your lives. One of those for me is Tom May, who was my essay advisor my final year at St. John's College. For me, it was really important to seek out the truth as much as possible in my years at St. John's. And I tried to have that rooted in my faith. And Tom May was a help for me in seeing how to do that even better, how to seek out the truth, be grounded in doing so in my faith. And there's those examples that we've met along the way, and some of those may be recent examples in our life and faith. For me, that came as I was studying how to be a spiritual director. One of the leaders, one of the teachers I had in that program was Jeff Akamatsu. And he was someone that I, I learned from his example, wanted to emulate his example, just a calmness of listening. The calmness and listening that was centered in love for our Lord Jesus Christ. And there's many more examples I can name, and I hope that that's the same case all of you, but there are many examples in your lives, the people who shaped you in your faith. And these examples, they form us and shape us because they give us an example to follow of who we want to be, the kind of persons we wish to be the world. Our hope, especially, is that these examples demonstrate to us how to live our faith, how to live into our values as we continue to serve Jesus Christ in this world. These examples are the very thing that Hebrews reminds us of this morning. And the author of that epistle tells us this. Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Now these words are especially helpful to a parish like ours that is in the middle of a search process. So these are words that our search committee should take very much to heart. As clergy, we are called to help develop all of you, your faith. And we can't do that unless we are strong and committed in our own relationship with Christ Jesus. And that's all the more important because as we go into the work of ministry, as we have all the work that's going on in the parish, it can be very easy if we don't have a firm foundation to start out on in our relationship with Christ Jesus, to not take the time in the midst of everything going on to continue and to build that relationship. So it's important to have someone who can get creative and make sure that they're taking that time, 
so that they have that firm relationship with our Lord. Yet our clergy aren't the only leaders that we look up to as examples in our life and within our parish. That's certainly not where the author of Hebrews would want us to end. The author of Hebrews would want us to just look to our ordained leadership. Because the leaders that we look to, the examples that we see, aren't just those who are ordained. The leaders that we're called to follow are everyone within the church. All people in the church, whether lay or ordained. Everyone here is called to be a leader in the church. And that's by our baptism. We are baptized into the body of Christ, the church. What that means for us is that we're all called to be leaders. We're all called to go out and proclaim the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're all called to be part of the work of the church. Paul reminds us of that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's there that Paul lays out the idea, the conception of the body of Christ. He compares it to a living body, the very bodies we all possess. Because for our bodies, we need our legs in order to be able to stand. We need our eyes to see. We need our ears to hear. We need our nose even to smell. And our arms to help lift things up, to hold up our own hands even. Each and every one of us is important to the body of Christ. Just as each and every part of our bodies has an important purpose to maintain our very lives, even. So we need all of your gifts. And even if you feel like your gift is something small and insignificant, it's not. It may be the very thing that we need to do the work that God has given us to do. It may be the very thing we're looking for to further proclaim the gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ to all in the world. Now the examples you thought of at the beginning, maybe even the examples you have thought of since, these are the people that helped bring you to where you are today. And hopefully, those examples helped you know Jesus all that much better. So now it's your turn. Whether you are young or old, experienced or new, you are called to be that example to others help bring them in, to help them build their relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ as we go on to proclaim the good news of our Lord to all who we meet. You are called to live your lives so that others may know our Lord Jesus Christ through you. Whether you are an example to one person, a thousand, or even a million, that is enough. Even if you are an example to just one person, you have done the work that God has given you to do. 
Hebrews also reminds us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. Help us remember that. Help us continue the great tradition of the church. Be that example to some, to help bring them closer to our Lord. Let your example be such that people come closer to our Lord Jesus Christ through that example in this world. And in this way, help us continue to build up the body of Christ in this world and in the next. And now please stand as you are able and let us profess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. God and his Father before all worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, he God not made, being of one substance of the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, and yet not for them, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us and for our he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and stood on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again in the glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped. Saved by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge the baptism of the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church in the spirit of truth, unity, and comfort. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and God the love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Trey, our priest, as well as Francis, Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, Archbishop of Constantinople, and all other denominational leaders, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth about truth and 
not at work, and rightly and fully administered the holy sacrifice. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that if we part and do reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also, sir, to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Tom, our governor, John, our mayor, and all our local elected officials, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to hold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor. Amy, Candy, Kathy, Hilby, Brianna, Robbie, Guy, Dave, Lori, Haitian, Bayou, Laura. Resco family, Ike, Claire, Rose, Barb, Barbara, Carla, Jennifer, Brittany, Debbie, Harriet, Art, Jerry, Susie, Joan, Ken, Harry, Tom, Gavin, Todd, Laura, Blake, Cameron, Rhonda, Brian, Michelle, Joan, Marge, Ron K, Ron Z, Scott, Mary, Mark, Rhonda, Kathy, Amy, Andy, Veronica, John P, Wilson, Rose, Barb, Jerry, Ruth, Jerry, Carol, Clem, Susie, Sandy, Michelle, Al, Sharon, Laura, Anna, Jean, Eleanor, Susan, Tom, Greg, Penny, and Fran, and all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. Marjorie Remy, Susan Minow, and Dean Smith. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating anniversaries this week, George and Helen Todd, Jr. We pray for the children, teens, and college students of this parish, and for those serving the military. We pray for the life and witness of our companion parish, St. Mark, Miami, Zion Church, Newtown, and St. Paul's, Levittown. Lord, go graciously on my church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a record parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for that people and equip us for our ministries. We offer up any other prayers at this time, whether aloud or in our hearts. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life in thy faith and fear especially Anne and White, Michael Gershman, and Bill Sloan, for whom altar flowers have been given, and Christian martyrs throughout the world, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Joseph, her most holy spouse, Luke, our patron, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator, and our Taking a moment of silence for reflection. Taking a moment of silence for reflection, let us humbly confess our sins. It's water.
Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and we are our manifold sins and wickedness, which we do from time to time and as previously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do mercy and repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant our equity ever and forever. Serve and please the endurance of life, in the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit to keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, O ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the perfect offering for our sins, not for our own, but for the sins of the whole world. Now please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We show one another a sign. Peace to those who are with us online as well. You may be seated. Well, all the announcements can be found in the back of your bulletins uh, or in your emails for those with us online. Uh, the back page is a lot of various local events. Some of them are very close by. Uh, some of them are within the wider context of our diocese. So please look at those at your leisure and see if there are any of those that you would be interested in. Uh, we do still have the call from our local grandmother for uh, needing baby things. Um, so thank you those who have already given. And thank you to those uh, who will uh, give uh, for that as well. Uh, one thing to point out, just uh, things we've got coming up, uh, we do have our uh, Christmas Bazaar uh, meeting, and that's going to be on September 11th, uh, so that will be following the service. Uh, what we'll do so that we can make sure everybody is there for our conversations uh, that we'll be having for Christian Formation is that will be pushed to the next week, but there will be an opportunity, uh, especially those who may be waiting for somebody uh, for that bizarre meeting, uh, there will be an opportunity for a Q&A. And we actually already have a box in the back that you can put questions that you may have uh, if you can't be here for that uh, in the back. So uh, please note that as well. Um, and as far as the, the formation, we will be doing that on Sundays in the fall, but our conversations um, after this service, um, that was what worked for the most people who responded uh, to our, our survey on that. If there's enough people that would like a different time or day for um, those type of conversations, I would be open to that. So just please let me know. 
Although, please note that I will be um, out for uh, vacation this week. Uh, so I may be a little late getting back to you if you email me uh, a better a, another time that you'd like to get together and have those conversations this week. Um, I will be back for Sunday, though, so um, I will look forward to seeing all of you, um, or at least everyone who's still here over uh, Labor Day weekend uh, next week. That's all um, I've got for the announcements in here. Um, don't forget, if you haven't done so already, to sign in for our service. And uh, also, don't forget, we have our offertory plate in the back. Um, so if you've got an offering to give, uh, please make sure you place it there at the end of the service. For those with us online, you could always mail your offerings in as well. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Our service now continues with Eucharistic Prayer 1. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Lift up your hearts. Jesus Christ our Lord, 
to show forth thy glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. Until his coming again. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took them. When he had given thanks, he prayed, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, for remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, to celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial of thy Son, and commanded us to pay. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits that you are unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. Of thy almighty goodness, God, safe to bless and sanctify, that thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body. We earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We was humbly beseech of thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we in all thy may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. To be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy for our sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounded duty and service, no weighing our merits, or pardoning our offenses, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Christ, our Passover, once for all, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us seek the peace. Hallelujah. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come in this society to the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, and in the high and unfold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crowns of thy table, but thou art the same Lord, which property is always without mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may have a more dwell in him. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith for thanksgiving. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come in my word, but to speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Our service now continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, be most holy in thee, that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us hereby that thy labor of good is for us, and that we are very much forward in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy heart. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom we be the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord shine the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Our closing hymn is hymn 376 and 376.